Hi, my name is Joe Antonini, and I'm a graduate student here at The Ohio State University. In this video, I'll be talking about a recent paper I wrote with my colleagues Jonathan Bird and Professor Paul Martini about the lifetime and powers of radio jets and galaxy clusters. An open question in the theory of galaxy formation is why the gas in galaxy clusters is as hot as it is observed to be. In simple cluster models, this gas should cool on timescales short relative to the lifetime of the cluster, and condense onto the cluster's central galaxy in so-called cooling flows. These cooling flows, however, are not observed to exist. Some mechanism appears to be heating this gas, but what this mechanism is is currently unknown. One candidate is what's known as radio mode feedback. In this hypothesis, some of the gas which condenses onto the central galaxy accretes onto the galaxy's supermassive black hole and triggers the jetted outflow. These radio jets then heat the external gas and quench the cooling flow. To better constrain the energetics of this process, we collected a sample of 151 edge-brightened radio sources, also known as FR2s, by cross-correlating the first radio catalog with the Max BCG Galaxy Cluster catalog. We then measured the projected lengths and radial luminosities of every source in our sample. By comparing these observed lengths and luminosities, to the results from a standard FR2 evolutionary model, we were able to obtain the age and jet power for every source in our sample. To account for the selection and projection effects in our sample, we generated a suite of mock catalogs. In each mock catalog, we generated 1 million random jets, each with a random distance, jet power, age, and inclination all drawn from a variety of empirically and physically motivated underlying distributions. We then applied our sample selection criteria and only selected those which we would in principle be able to detect. From this, we were able to obtain a length distribution that we should be expect to be able to observe for every mock catalog so that we could compare these simulated length distributions with the observed length distribution of our sample. In this figure, we have the cumulative length distribution of the sample on the solid line, and the best fitting mock catalog, which has a lifetime of 190 million years, in the dashed line. To illustrate how sensitive this method is, we also use the two dotted lines to show the expected length distributions for two other lifetimes, 62 million years for the line on the left, and 330 million years for the line on the right. We now use the measured jet powers and lifetimes of the FR2s in our sample to better constrain their impact on cluster heating. In this figure, the solid line represents the average cooling of clusters of different sizes. The open points represent the jet powers that we measure in our sample. It is clear that the jets provide more than enough power to quench cooling in galaxy clusters. However, we find that only a small fraction of this energy escapes the radial lobes and heats the general cluster gas. These estimates are represented by the solid points, and they are all substantially below the cooling line. We therefore conclude that FR2s are unlikely to play a major role in cluster heating. If you would like to know more about the methods we use and the results we obtain, please consult our paper, which is posted on the archive.